Facebook screeter. Skeeter, we are up there. Okay, this is actually not part of it, but I left it out because I really like the art. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> yes, it is. So, uh, I actually saw you this weekend, Skeeter Green. We were actually picking up a bunch of books, heavy books. Uh, picking them up, loading them. Uh, well, some of us were loading them. Some of us were picking them up. Some of us also disappeared. Oh, well, I was I was working. You don't you forget? Yeah, yeah. All right, whatever. That's uh, fine. And so I know, I, that, I know I, that your wife was working hard. Well, dude, that's because I invite her to work hard. That's the whole point. Because because she's totally tougher than you. Oh, she's smarter too. But the good news is I can actually ignore that half the time because I'm when you're dumb you can ignore lots of stuff. Uh, well, no, we were out in a. That she is Jen the Ripper. Um, we were way out uh, in Washington State, me and Jen, uh, doing work for Frog God by uh, being there for the giant packing situation that was Rappanathic fulfillment that included maps and included uh, the Rapid, the Toma Horse, uh, a lot of the, the, all the other books for him. And it was about 3,600 packages and one angry, wow. angry poster, postal person. Oh, no. Well, there was one super angry postal worker and her helper. Her helper was, he was awesome. He played Swords and Wizardry and he didn't even know where he was. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was a lot less angry than his cohort. But I can tell you right now that it was extremely difficult to pack books with my accessory. So. But the best part, when you made it work when you weren't supposed to. You were only there for entertainment, Skeeter. You didn't know that. I did work. You did, and you were supposed to. Your wife was going to be mad. Well, no, but Rapid Ethic weighs about four pounds. And even yeah. by itself, we shipped over 1,200 books. And then Toma Horrors weighs about two and a half. So by the end of those days, we were tired. So when I was there on Saturday, Saturday alone, there was four pallets that were, what, four feet high? Yeah. Books. There was probably quick estimate three hundred books on each pallet. Uh, Doug Zilsdorf yeah. says that uh, he loves mass mailings. <clears throat> I love them too. When I live in Arizona yeah. and the webs do all the fulfillment in Washington. <clears throat> and Bill, you don't tell me to talk louder. That's Zach screwing up my mic level. That's right. Oh, I can't help it. No, no, Matt. Matt said. Uh, I need to talk louder. This is the same volume I always talk. Zach has screwed up the levels somewhere. I'm lucky I have a mic that works. Muted. You're a bit muted. Yeah. Hold on, Skeeter. Let's see here. Raise my level. level. I don't know if that's going to work. Let me try it in Skype real fast. Hey, uh, watch Matt I screw it all up. Is there an echo for the stream, by the way? I did read. Uh, yeah. Does anybody have an echo issue? With We're Skeeter. actually going to get this going pretty soon. We are. I don't. I think it sounds fine. Okay. Excellent. But, but I'm loud in my own head. Well, you're loud in my head too. So you know what? I think it's just Matt. <laughs> no, honestly, no echo. Thank you, Jen. My wife actually, Jen the Ripper, showed up and she said there was no echo. Yay. So, all right, let's get this. Let's go in. So anyway, so we were in Washington and uh, we were packing books. And all that reminded me of is why I don't want to make a box set ever again. Just the um, remembering the difference between putting a book in a box, wrapping it up and taping it up real nice and putting it on the thing versus having a box with 30 things in it. Like that? Like that, yes. That I'm pointing right over my shoulder. Yes, I. That I got, haven't opened yet because I haven't caved in. Bill and I, in. Bill and I opened it. Yeah, I caved in. I caved in totally. But Jen said she'd buy me a new one. So uh, I'm gonna open that one in a minute. All right. Well, so I say we get started, Skeeter Green. What we do here each time we come on is I have a problem. I have too many box sets. I got two more today, and exactly. of these box sets, uh, I rarely have time to read them. But I do love them anyway. But I figured that we're going to randomly pick three. So I picked three at random. Skeeter has no idea what they are. I rarely actually understand so, them. Go! Before, we, before no. we start this, before I roll the 
12 sided dice of fate i i'm going to uh i'm going to pitch somebody's book since you do box sets all I'll right books go ahead i just recently got this stefan who i don't know some guy he he makes models it's a nice looking and, book and, and some art it's a beautiful sketchbook very nice I got tipped off to that book by a Mr. Tim Cask. Perhaps you have heard of him. I have. He was talking about it on uh, Curmudgeon in the Cellar. A very nice little podcast that I enjoy. And uh, he actually has enough class to to promote other websites. Like I'm about to do. I should I, I should turn off your stream. No, <laughs> no Uncle Matt's D and D studio. Uncle Matt is uh, Matt Finch. He kindly lets us uh, power his channel so we can have a good time. He actually has an intellectual things that go on. Um, for instance, he talks to smart people, except for me and Bill Webb. <laughs> yeah, he's much more highbrow. Uh, we yeah. are the bottom of the barrel. We are the mass entertainment section. Well, Uncle except for the mass channel. part. Except for the mass part. Right. We're the we're the mild entertainment section. That's exactly right. So, Skeeter Green, why don't you give me a dice roll and we can begin? I'm going to give you a dice roll. Twelve sided dice, seldom used. Five by three. Uh, that will be the middle box set today, Zach. All right, this is the one that will be. This is the one I know least about, and you might know. Ready? Oh boy. I know a little bit about this. I know it involves superheroes. It does. It does involve superheroes. Now, what I is this a fa- as some of the audience can answer, is this a phase rip? Is that what they're always talking about for the system that runs this with dice? What? I think I it's I think it's the system, how it's designed. Someone okay. will answer. Maybe or they won't. So we got a judge's screen. Um I cannot I do not know what came in this set. This came packed full of stuff. And so that's why I li- that's why I bought it, because I could tell it with had extras. So it just, it's nicely color coded. Looks like a comic book. You've got a universal table that this basically tells me: that shift, feeble, poor, typical, good, excellent. And at that point, we'll stop because you wouldn't roll higher, right? Maybe. Well, the results of Skeeter Green's jumping you can see by his arm. See, I have two good arms. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there we go. Look, the judge's screen. It comes with Marvel Manhattan, which looks suspiciously like actual Manhattan, but probably a lot cheaper. <laughs> so uh, yeah uh when did this box set come out zach you know i should consult my handy dandy copy consult of the book yeah we'll have to find the book so actually well, you're gonna look all right, <laughs> all right i'll look this up all right you're... i believe it's the mid uh 80s probably 80 45 it might say inside this jeff grubb wrote this one in what year copyright oh, oh don't speak that Battle book uh there we go how about this campaign book it says 1984 that's exactly what i can't find still yes 1984 <laughs> yes it is wow. so um i did not grow up on comics i have developed a, more of an interest in them now because i find these stories and the, like the heroes archetype in the dark the difference between like a superhero from born with it the superhero who earns it or is given it uh, versus ones who have items i find that really fascinating i think it's like a modern day mythology but uh growing up i thought it stunk i thought the x-men were lame because i liked hobbits and i cared about fighters were you stung as a child what is wrong with you i you know i don't know but i was really picky and i picked Man. dungeons and dragons you so, could do both i did both i'm, I'm a focused guy comics. i'm a focused guy i had really the I, I had the dragon last comics and i had the ad and d ones dark shitty comics that Ooh. were crazy and expensive and involved a lot of disembowelment. Yeah, I bet. It was a, that was the 90s, yeah? During the, the height of the dark comic phase where there was a comic store in every corner and we were all speculating? Pretty much. Like tulips. <laughs> yeah. And right. uh, the speculation did not pay out, let me tell you that. Well, I believe it. So, all right. So, the Breeders' Bombs, which sounds kind of like a birth control, but uh, is actually a module by Jeff Grubb. So um, I, I know Jeff Grubb very, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I know that my boss plays D&D with him. He's like the nicest guy. I just want to say anything he writes, I'm, I'm pre-determined like determined to actually go, you know, 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's a level of smartass that you really don't notice right off the bat. Well, it's funny because I mean, I've, I've never seen it. Pretty cool, unassuming dude. But uh, if he feels like he can pull a smartass maneuver on you, he'll totally do it. He does it to me hey, frequently. Have you seen this Colossus guy in any shows? Um, yeah, but that's not the one from. Ah, uh, boo! Well, there you go. That's so the goody too. Well, yeah, it, it is kind of the good. One of the thing. things about superhero games that I think that somebody I know has actually cracked the uh, the code on to make a little difference. Everybody wants to play heroes they know or powers that match the ones they know, and so you have a hard time sometimes with the story because it's not a dungeon crawl. It's a very different kind of like adventure written, and uh, I know somebody thinks about superheroes all day and all night, and. Uh, he thinks he found a way to do it that seems really cool for the mega heroes that's coming up by Jim Wampler. Um, I, dude, am, I am interested to partake in this. I am very interested. I actually have seen the play test. It was looked a lot of fun. I know that these systems were fun. I know that uh, people played Marvel quite a bit because it was the X-Men, because it was... I'm going to say a DC hero here. I just know it, so I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Yeah, I will. So... Um, so I got, we got one book. I don't think the screen came in the box originally. And I believe this kid, this is with the adventure. So we have a, a battle map, right? <laughs> Yay, battle map. Yep. And this looks like that's a battle map to what? Does anybody know? Um, uh, that's X Mansion. Xavier's office. I would have known, but that was quick, Skeeter. All right. So. You think I'm new? Hey, I, I saw the Deadpool walking through there. Anyway, so Bre Breeder Bombs is a short adventure. It even says in the back, um, uh, desperate, takes desperate man to attack the X-Men single-handed. But revenge for a murder partner makes a man desperate. No kidding. Wow, in the chat, uh, Mr. Jim Wampler already has a fan base. My wife. Uh, my wife, too, actually. <laughs> well, it's, it's the chat he, right there. Like, he he oh, can't help Wampler. it. So... All right, so we have the uh, Marvel Superheroes campaign book. This looks like exactly everything published by TSR in the Breadbox era, right? So if Dr. you see Doom. Dr. Doom, got your modifiers. Yep, got your modifiers. Got your every other uh, row shading on there, or every third row. Yeah. No, um, I do like I like the art. I don't know comics well, but, like, I like that. <laughs> I, that's Dr. Octopus? Uh. That is... Says Century Robot. I, I believe it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, this one was written... Uh, not. Know. This was written not entirely by Jeff Grubb, but by... Uh, oh, good God. Steve Winner. Oh, Lord. I mean, is there, anything, is there anything that guy didn't pretend to fraudulently touch? No. So, on this one, the only thing wrong when I picked up the box set the other day was that it actually been punched a bit. And so these, if you can see there, turn around. Those are cool. Yeah, they're cool. That looks like a, that I'll read about here. That's is, actually really good art just for yep. some. That's Sigar Sigard Garlson. But the cool part was, as always, the ah, crown. The yeah. crown. I get so excited when I see that. And I have the two of these. Yeah, that's right. Worship me. Yeah, those, those are dice. No, but they're, they're cool dice because they remind me of being young again. And I'm not. <laughs> I learned that this weekend. So uh, Those are literally some of the worst dice ever produced. Oh, it doesn't matter. long enough, they chipped and broke no. off. No, it doesn't matter. You know, McDonald's hamburgers are about the worst hamburgers ever produced. They sell millions. Anyway, so uh, this is interesting. So we have the guy to scenic New York. And what's awesome <laughs> is that you have... I should have you copy that, and I can go next time. You I'm actually, in Manhattan. oddly enough, here, let me move this over a bit. Oddly enough, Skeeter, you can because you can. You too can go to Rockefeller Center, the city uh -huh. within the city at Fifth and Sixth Avenue, NBC, Time Incorporated, Radio uh -huh. City Music Hall. I mean, I've it's got it all on. I'm serious. Chinatown. There. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Well, you are a tourist. The Statue yeah. of Liberty. I mean, all this stuff is. It was a Christmas show. Yep. Anyway, so, Rich. and then we have we have the inside of your uh, New York City guide. There's a sudden letter. And it's a summary of what you have to do in the activity of supervillains. And I'm always going to pick a supervillain. Let's the audience see if they can see. 
Who would you pick for you of those? Hydra, Kingpin? Oh, that's a super group, villain group, isn't it? Well, some of them are groups. Kingpin is his own guy. All right. Uh, here's more. I, I did walk around Hell's Kitchen at midnight in the rain. By yourself, right? By myself. Of course. The, the fantastically cool part about that is when I was walking up the street, two people that were walking towards me moved to the other side of the street. I would have. <laughs> I thought that was the greatest thing ever. And then I quickly uh, went back to the hotel. Wise move. So uh, here, here's, <laughs> here's your chance to join the RPGA. I bet you, bet you if you sent a check, they might not cash it now, so it's pretty cheap. Hey, yeah. I bet not. All right. Now. Now we're talking. That is a character card. Yeah, the Fang. Yeah, Human Torch. That I think that could be you, honestly. Nope. Nope. Mister Fantastic. Nope. Certainly nope. not. Hmm. Invisible Girl. So flip it over and see which Captain Marvel they're actually using. I think this is the. She looks badass. This is, this is like the. She was like the third version, I think. Of Captain Marvel. So. Well. Very cool. Very cool. There's quite a bit of stuff in here. I think it's pretty neat. This is a really large poster map. I'll hold it over here. Uh, comic book thing never nabbed me, says uh, Douglas Zilsdorf. And no. And I don't know why. Because honestly, yeah, I fit all the nerd like parts there. So. Then we have a very large like city block. Yep. You got 7th so, Avenue yeah. and Cleveland Street. So is that scaled out to use those uh, token cards? The small token cards, yeah. The other ones are character cards. Right. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, look. When Skeeter and I were, Skeeter came to visit for a, uh, we had a convention, and Chuck uh, Wright, who was a frog god, and I and Chuck Wright's uh, wonderful lady friend, uh, Peggy, we all went out to have lunch, and Skeeter decided he hates ramen, but he was really not a big fan of octopus. I had I don't like the octopus. Ramen is just, I don't like the ramen house. I don't want a frisbee sized piece of mushroom and an entire freaking egg in a bowl of wet noodles that I don't particularly care for. Did you try right. the, You didn't try the takoyaki. I don't even know what that is. It was the octopus. That? that was the rice and octopus ball that I ate in front of you. I didn't get the octopus ball. I offered it to I you. And you something that wasn't going to You said pass. Yeah. All right. So anyway, day of the octopus, we got the fixer. Oops, right there. The fixer, the octodroid robot, the beetle. The beetle. The beetle. So they actually these are look like a little bit like uh done like their newspapers. They do obviously, which I was shocked everybody. There's a comic strip there. Excellent. You know, if you have Photoshop, you can make that really funny. Oh. I, yeah. It's a good thing I don't know anybody who's good with Photoshop. Yeah, I know. Hey, look, ambush on Seventh Avenue. You know that could be any city. That's happened. Yeah. All right. So campaign book, battle book. I got. I think this one. The two extras that it came with were the uh, Jeff Grubbs, unfortunately named the Breeder Bomb, and the Judge's screen. So ooh, there we go. Jeff has done a lot of work for role playing. He does. Just, and he, just a ton. He has, and you know, the, the, the worst part is he doesn't even think he has. He's crazy. Man. He has, he's so unpretentious, unlike us. Oh, boy. That guy, hold on. What? It, it just switched. I uh, was tapping my box set, and it switched the camera. Well, that sounds dirty when you say it. Why don't you roll dice there, Skeeter? I'm going to roll some dice. I'm going to roll the 20-sided dice. All and right. How are we going to delineate this? I think we're going to go high-low. All right. Sounds fair. We could go a lot of ways, but that's probably the one that works. hey uh, We're going to go high, so box the second that you have left. T uh, time travel role-playing. Time and time again. All right. Interesting art style. I'm not opposed to that. I don't know anything about this particular box. Well, my first thought is that it's like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure done in an RPG, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think so. So, we got... Wait! 
There's more. There's more. Well, that's fantastic start. So it says the time of shipping, only one of the three scenarios in this game had returned from the printer to receive your free copy. <laughs> oh, Zach, yep. Zach, we, we have a request from the chat room that I'm going to give to you from our friend Job. <laughs> Job Bibbin? Yes. What does he want? No, read the chat. For face, Facebook? Facebook? Hold on, I got to get to there. Yeah, come on. I mean, that's that's for you. Ah, uh, see here. There it is. From our friend Job. <laughs> I don't even have anything around here I can be funny with. All right, hold on. Job? Uh, well, I don't see it. I don't know. You have to reach me, it's Skeeter. It. It's, it. it's a, a, He's asking for you to show your tits. No. Okay. I've heard about him, though. That's now over. <laughs> well, no. Well, maybe. Has it, there's a super chat sort of thing, aren't there? You give money? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. wow. Okay. This is, we're going to monetize this. <laughs> you know. I don't think Uncle Matt really expected that. Well, Uncle Matt's going to become like, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Uncle, uh, Uncle. I can't remember the guy's name now. It's just my, my tongue. The guy who owned uh, 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 Larry Flint. Uncle Larry Flint is going to be next <laughs> after all that. <laughs> wow. All right. All so right. back to the actual thing. And no, I won't show them right. unless I'm paid enough. Um. I love this. This is the best thing I've seen yet. Wait, there's more. So you buy the box set, and they print it, and they leave out two of the pieces and let you know. Please don't show this to Bill Webb, because yeah, no, that would be a problem. He he would happily send it and spend the money. It's not the point, but he, he would think that's cool. I mean, they're they're letting you know, and I tell you right now, I would be horrified, and. uh We'll send you the three scenarios as soon as possible. Thank you. But March 1985. I wonder if they came out. I wonder yeah, if anybody knows. That would, be, that would be interesting to know if they ever... Uncle Matt, Uncle Matt <laughs> saying, excellent start for a time travel game. Wait, there's more. He's correct. Another start would be like, haven't we already done this? Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if I killed my father? <laughs> we know you enjoyed this the first time, but here's the game. <laughs> Go back in time and tell Matt the YouTube channel is a lot of work. <laughs> time again, book one, Temporal Physics, Bureau of Temporal Affairs. Okay. World Government, Character Generation, and Voltageur's Tales. Unarmed Combat looks kind of interesting. So this is in 1985. So what we got? We got pretty good layout. Looks like pretty standard. The font is the standard. It's... This looks like top secret. Uh, like top secret. It, it's after the change from Futura, from the DMG. Anyway, so we have a you know standard picture of the world. Ooh, they uh, used a photocopy of a picture for Greece. All right, no art, but honestly, Ooh. Like, ah, well that's actually that's a ti that's a time machine. How can you be so oh. cruel? Yeah. Oh, oh hey, okay. there's one you recognize. It's a wedding ceremony. Hey. Whoa. No, sorry. Anyway. Uh, so we got a... Looks like they use the we're, famous we're paintings. Having like a witch and a duck and a log. It's actually pretty clever because they use famous paintings and other things in public domain to uh, illustrate it, which I think is actually one of those ideas that I wish that we could get away with um, effectively. Do you? There are times. Really? There are times. But, but... Um, it's not distracting for sure. It uh, looks like there's seven chapters. I do like their picks for the art. It's all either uh, engravings or other other such picks. But here's some examples. All right, let's do this. Skeeter, I'm going to give you yes. some survival skills. All right. Tell me if you have any of these. Stab it. No, that's not you, but okay. All right. Uh, you can't jump because you fall. No, I can jump now. Can you, can you hide? Uh, depends on what is trying to find me. If oh. it's police, yes, I can. <laughs> if it's work, you can too. No. Um, yeah. Can you uh, scan? Scan is one. It's an abstract combo of listening, smelling, and looking for danger. Huh. Okay. Here's some social skills. How about gambling? Almost done. Uh, I can I can gamble. I just don't like to. Okay. Lock picking. I actually do know how to do that. You don't drink anymore, so you can't be that one. Romancing. That's the one. 
That's the one has to be. This right. is a real dicey answer, so I'm yeah. just going to keep my well, mouth look, shut. I, I'm just going to I'm going to quote. Allow me to quote about romancing from time and time again. Uh -uh. Romancing, like drinking, <laughs> already I'm laughing, um, is a skill taught by the BTA. It must be the temporal authority. Uh, ro romancing works like drinking, but the basic attribute is attitude instead of con instead of constitution. The skill involves the ability to get what you want whenever you may be from a member, hopefully, of the opposite sex. Boy, that is homophobic. That, um, that is seriously that, Yeah, wow. Uh, perhaps through charm. It also implies the ability to deflect unwanted advances with the least repercussions. That's actually be handy. Um, it is perhaps Gosh, most useful, be so useful in, so many de cases. in detecting attempts to get something from a character when successfully used. So it's like a seduction, anti-seduction role. Huh. Well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, not not sold. Didn't didn't we have this in uh, the James Bond? Yeah, but that was called itself. called seduction, and it was a lot more sophisticated. At least it happened in Monaco. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, well yeah, be in Monaco. So basically, the combat looks pretty simple. It looks like a D one hundred, and then uh, it looks like one D ten for damage. Um, it has a GM decide D two hundred. Well, there you go. I never I haven't seen that in a while. Right there. Says a character must roll a skill some, level. We need some Zoki dice. He needs to make that. A character needs to roll his skill okay. level or less on a D two hundred. I right now am picturing the best way to do that. Um, that's stupid. <laughs> if I don't you know. Have to invent a dice for your your mechanic beyond you the fact that we've already done that for D and D. No. It's too complex. There's already dice out. Well, you just destroyed the entire like gimmick of uh, actually Dungeon Claw Classics and Fate. <laughs> all kinds of what's. <laughs> but, but I digress. I know. I would go into a little talk about that because actually I played the One Ring. And the One Ring dice actually, all the tiny bit different. They actually did make the game pretty cool. So I can't hammer on everybody. All right. Book two. Climate, terrain, animals. Yeah, climate, terrain, animals, technology, that all sounds like stuff I deal with now. Right. Money, hey. money and trade. You they use the, the standard coins. Coins are your choice for the... Uh... The realms. Yeah, that's right. There's a caravan. I'm going to give that to Liz Stewart for one of the one we're going to do. Uh, and um, we've got <laughs> an Alyssa Faden-style ship that still has masts. Nice. So... This is just basic, like, how to get around. Like, the problem with this is you need, like, GURPS because you're going anywhere in time. So say I'm going to wind up in Rome. Well, what does the Gladius do? Then I'm going to wind up in, I don't know, here, which, what is my, what a long story do? I don't know. Ooh, did it again. Well, what needs to come back into fashion in this time period is punch in the face. Funny enough, that's in there. Under ethics and etiquette. <laughs> I'm just gonna skip over that. No, 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 no. Oh no, Skeeter! Get rid of that bitch right there. No Forever. way. Uh -uh. I'm not having any of it. Oh, uh, here. Quote. Now listen here. Oh, Eating boy. people is a good example. Rules you against cat. Right? No. Quote. <laughs> Eating people is a good example. Hey now. Rules against cannibalism are normally a part of ethics. What? I'm dead serious. And then it says, <laughs> um, uh, in, both, in fact, both are natural terms in the way of nature is used. Eating people actually causes concern with neighboring villages and tribes. Well, no shit. Okay. <laughs> I agree. Well, yeah. If you find yourself on the menu, you're going to make sure your shit comes correct. Because you can be eliminated. Hey, Jim Stanton's smarter than us. He told us how to do a D200. Uh, did he? Yeah. What, how did he say to do it? D one hundred and a D six. Four to six is one hundred to one hundred one to two hundred. Okay, that's it. No more smart. You're done. All right. I can't throw him out, chat, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and then we have just moments for this must be an adventure, and it has your NPCs, and it's this is the length of like a steading of the hill giant chief. Oh, was it like eight pages? Yeah, and the thing is, it says it's missing two of them. So they must send you the other eight pages. It's, four, um, it's actually four pages, one sheet. 
Somebody in the chat mentioned that uh, only one of the three scenarios was ever published. So I feel scammed. Um, you bought this. I did. I bought it from. I bought it in Texas too. I bet I know who I got it from. Oh, I bet, God. I, is it from Ingo? I bet it's from Ingo. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> anyway, so there's your periodic weapons stuff. This is all just. I'm going to give this a certified meh. Yeah, I mean that that seems about right. Oh. I didn't even have to go through all of this to get to the meh. Yeah, but I keep hey. I keep on knocking the books on the table and it switches me to the title card. That's actually kind of yeah. cool. You're freaking me out because I keep thinking I'm getting kicked out of the. Stream. That's what you're supposed to think. Okay, you ready for the last one, Scooter? I am. I was born ready. This is actually uh, an offshoot of this is coming out for fifth edition very soon. I am not In surprised. November, actually. I'm not surprised. So, once again, I'll say what I always say with these box sets. I didn't play second edition. I'm sorry I didn't, but I didn't. And so, when most of these came out, I was into other things. And so, I recognized them from shelves and from all of you talking about all of them at conventions and made me want to buy more. Um, this is one I've heard of more than a few times. I never seen. I, never, I don't. I have number one, but I have two copies, and they're both in shrink. And so I was. I actually picked that as one of the ones I rolled for. So I picked number two that wasn't. <laughs> Fair enough. I think so. And so, what do you remember about this, Skeeter? I remember playing through Under Mountain for months and months and months and months and months. We went through. Every supplement played through the whole thing. It was fantastic. Good times. Well, let's see who and wrote it here. The campaign. Mm, who? Thanks to Ed Greenwood. What do you know? Uh, uh, I know Ed is a prolific writer, and you can get caught up in a deep, deep, deep conversation with him very easily. This you didn't write this one. <laughs> uh, you may not. Have. How do you say the last name? Uh, Gene Robbie? Robbie? R A B E? Rabe? Uh, I, I've, I've seen her. I've seen her before. And I don't know how to pronounce her name. I feel terrible. I don't know. And then Norm Ritchie. And then we have uh, any names here you recognize? Um, no. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, that means they're unsung heroes. Okay. Great writing. James Stan says, interesting, but not my favorite by long shot. Well, there's 500s that could be your favorite. So, I mean, I can get that. <laughs> but anyway, so this one winds up being uh, 128 with an advertisement to join. El Welcome to Elminster's World, the Player's Guide to the Forgotten Realms. Other than that. You had that too. Did you? So we, this has got a, a actual rooms, and these are all rooms that I, have headers. I have all that stuff sitting right down there on the bottom shelf, which I'm going to uh, eventually sell off as a played through uh, bundle of random crap. Uh, I actually, you, the title of that room is Shredded Wheat. And I have a feeling the wheat is not actual wheat. It's people. No, no, I just know that cannibalism is not a good thing from the ethics section of Time and Again. Hey, Soylent Green is people. Yeah. So is Taco Bell. Oh. Um, ooh. All right, so these are all just... Actually, what I like is these are all the keyed rooms come in the made book. Um, I've seen lots of books that have really long intros, and although I'm all for it when we're selling books like that, when I actually pick up a book and the first 80 pages are having for me to read to just get in the mood, eh. <laughs> um, And I, so I go back and read them sometimes, but sometimes I think that it's more exciting to not know some of those things. So, anyway... Hey, do I know where you've been? Communal bath. I'm not going to say that I have not. No, I'm just saying. The communal bath is where you definitely catch the plague. You need a cleric. Yes. But, you know, Maybe finally I have. found a use for purified food and water. Yeah, there you go. Bundle of random crap isn't bad marketing, says Uncle Matt. You know, I wrote Whisper and Venom, and I think that actually I should be offended. No, bundle of random 
crap, I'm going to sell all these played through things that uh, the collectors. That's the first box that I'm nice working on up in Jordaba is the bundle of random crap. I, I random crap. Except it's not. That's what sucks. I can't use that. So the campaign guide, a, ve a, a very, very, very gold colored character sheet. And uh, looks like a part of one. Ah, the adventures. Ooh, there you go. There. Yeah, this is by uh, Donald Bingle. Ring a bell? Okay. We need to. F I want to find some of these guys that wrote all this stuff that I've never heard of because I bet they have interesting stories of TSR back in the day. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, Donald Bingle, Stephen Shend, Fred Fields, Dan Frazier, Angelica Lokutz, L O K O T Z. Paul Hanchette and uh, Dennis Kaus. I'm cool, though. I'm in. One of my favorites, troglodytes in a raid. Oh, they smell. I've been called that once. That, that was they by smell. an English person, too. You're like a troglodyte. I was like, Mondu. Oh, guy I knew in college. Oh, <laughs> That's like, the shit out of him. Yeah. No, nah, like I. No. Nah. Nah. I've been called worse, usually by you. So. European? Hey. God damn it, you put my name is next to a swear word all the time. I have started a cult in your name, so you just shut up and enjoy it. Hey man, thank you. You're welcome. Anyway, so oh nothing but love, man. Nothing I think we had, we both had uh, Bill Webb in common as a boss. And he likes really weird puns and kind of some of them great, some of them right there. A fungus among us. I think we've used that one. I I guess it's not that <laughs> empty threats. <laughs> That's what I've got. Uh, okay. These are all, these are all puns. Oh my God, they're all puns. Yeah, yeah, that was sort of the point of that whole section. Color coordinated yeah. on the beach. Uh, Lord, Lord, a wild. Oh, we're in trouble. Mm. Actually, uh, a couple of important people have come into the Facebook chat now. Oh, who? who? Do we know anybody important? Uh, Kurt. And Alex. So, Alex. No, we don't. <laughs> well, Alex Kammer? Um, yeah. Well, why is here? I might as well mention. If you're going to Game Hole and you are thinking to yourself, I'm going to play all these. God damn it. I, God damn it, Zach. I know. I keep on. Let's type my desk. It goes. Anyway, if you're going to Game Hole and you're saying to yourself, I'm going to play in hours and hours of games. And that's all I'm going to do. You are missing out on one of the best times. And that is the Saturday night auction at 8 o'clock. Uh, we have. A huge donation of stuff just dropped. That there's some great stuff. There's a, I think there's a first print brown box that I will not bid on and cannot afford. I have some stuff right here. That's I know, and I'm actually contributing to that one because uh, some people have complained that one of the boxes we actually covered, the uh, astonishing swords and sorcerers of Hyperborea by one Jeff Tlanian, that uh, they can't find that anymore because the box that's hard to get and everything else. So Skeeter had a there it is, a nice box. And uh, it has a nice dice and everything else in it. I am going to contribute two of the signed first adventures, the Rats in the Walls and the Charnel of the Undead Serpent or something like that. It was yeah. Charnel of the Serpent God. And uh, those are actually, I think, hard to find as well. And so we're going to make one one little uh, auction item on that one. So it's not like the brown box will go for $25,000 or something. This will not go for as much. And so you should consider going to the auction to buy those kinds of things. If you're obsessed like we are about things that we – don't have time to read and no time to play. Uh, go get more at the auction at Game Hole. <laughs> and and uh, a portion. A portion. I don't know the percentage. It's a, a portion of the proceeds. It, dep it depends on. Life. It depends on uh, how much the actual donor wants to give, and mo most of it's given at one hundred percent. So uh, Extra Life does good. They actually, if you're against children and you're against hospitals, and you can be against Extra Life. Otherwise, you should support them. Wow. Even I wasn't going that far. <laughs> Shit balls. <laughs> More RPGA for you, Skeeter. Yay, RPGA. Oh. Oh, you can get the little mailer. Well. Customer all right. response card. Man, I can still answer some of these. Ready? Is there a fill-in for nope. that? The number of TSR games I purchase is more than know. more than four a month. <laughs> Ooh, that might be true. One per one item per month. One every three, blah, blah. Okay. I generally pur purchase more novels than games. No. More no. games than novels. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, my favorite line of novels would be D and D World. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance, Ravenloft, Dark Sun, Spelljammer, Greyhawk, Aquadim. So uh, there you go. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Forgotten Realms or Ravenloft. Actually, those, those are choices you can live with. I you don't have to be right. Wow. All right. And we have the wow. This is looks like. That is a lot of walking around underground. It is. Now, if you were to chop that up into eight by ten sections, that would be how many maps there, Mr. Zach Glazer? That, that would be eight, wouldn't it? That would be eight indeed. How nope. many of those map sheets do you have in that box set? Well, boy, I'm taking a look right now. At least one. No. One. Two. <laughs> All right, this one, Ruins of Under Mountain 2, Willow Wood. So that's eight more. Eight more. This one is the, I hate names, I can't pronounce, Trobriad's, uh Graveyard. And that's another big cavern. I guess it's under a mountain, so it's going to all be that way. And the last one of them I got is this. The ruins, that, Muriel's Gauntlet, which reminds me of Saint Muriel, but it's not the same game. Yeah, no, not at all. So was that uh, one, two, four? three, four times eight? That's uh, so, somebody in the chat tell us what that is. Thirty-two eight and a half by eleven maps. How quaint! Yes, that's a, that is quaint. <laughs> oh man. I don't even want to bring it up. <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, so then you have the the handout cards. I love these. And actually, Edwin and I were worked on the City of Brass. We came up with a, more of those to put with the maps and those map packs. Because I thought they just made it a little more fun for players to go, I'm going to go to the tavern. What's the drink? And you hand them a, you know, a menu. And then I'm going to go down to the merchant. Here's the list. And I feel like buying illegal drugs down the corner black market. Well, here are your choices, right? Who doesn't? I know it. Well, it's in Barsgate. Um, there's a beggar skill. So anyway, see so if this has got a Dungeons and Illusions on it. And uh, roll me a D12, Skeeter. I am on that. Here is the D12. Uh, 11. You get, oh, okay. This was, you hear audible illusions of heartbeats. Within a certain hollow room, make the PCs believe they're hearing their own heartbeats increase. Just like a telltale yeah. heart, dude, following you around. Yeah, I kind of get that sometimes. So mechanical traps, mechanical traps. You just need grim tooth for that. Mechanical traps. Oh, swinging blades, contact poisons, not nine kinds of gas. <laughs> Where's Tom tell us when we need him? That's just nine. He would say, "You like hold my nacho." Um, right. Furniture spikes and poly. Oh, magical trap that causes you Everard's Everard's black tentacles. Ooh. Sounds like a Japanese TV show. Um, hey -o. Hey -o. And, oh man, tongue tied. When this trap is triggered, all within 10 by 10 are, effect, are subject to the effects of a filter of stammering and stuttering. Victims do not receive a saving throw. That is the designer's mm -hmm. crappy way out of everything. Do not receive hey. a saving throw. <laughs> Sometimes you, you just have to suffer. No, I do it all the time. I'm just saying that, uh, that is a sign of it, though. And, like, uh, the other one I love is, uh, for me, I want to always, like, limit death saves in 5e. <laughs> I know. I'm bad. So, Skeeter, those are the three we got. We got Undermountain. We've got Time and Again. And we have the Marvel. Mm -hmm. I, I already know what our least favorite is, Skeeter. Time travel. Oh, I thought Undermountain was kind of shitty. No, yeah, time travel. Um, I like Undermountain. <laughs> I know. I actually like it too. I just thought it was funny because when you open when you open a box and it says, "Hey, it's not all here," when it's brand new, that sets the relationship up for being sort of questionable. I am in the camp with Jason Gardner, and I am a fan of Mega Dungeons. Well, and Under Mountain is definitely one of the most famous. We'll call it. Mega Dungeons. Well, in our, available. in our hobby, that was a bold statement. 
I'm a fan of Mega Dungeons. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm going to stand by my statement. No, you should, because uh, Greg Gillespie wrote uh, on Barrel Maze. And uh, I know Michael Curtis did uh, the the crazy one where they locked all the insane inmates in the uh, the asylum. They just closed the top of, top over the heaven. There was a uh, stone there's, hell. There's a ton. There's a ton of mega dungeons, but for strictly um, what more people have probably played and know of, Under Mountain. I believe it. They just do. I believe it. I actually someday I'll have time to play one of those. All right, everybody, this has gone long. Um, Thank you very much. Sorry we started a little bit late. I was uh, talking to Skeeter, trying to make sure the audio worked, and it sort of worked. Now watch. I'm going to hit my hand. I'm going to hit my hand on the desk, and it's going to bring us out. Yeah, it did. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, we didn't get the fireball. Oh, hold on. That... No, we didn't. I feel cheated. So do I. All right, I'll work on